This is the G1, the second generation of handsets from Google's Android One project in collaboration with Cherry Mobile as their OEM partner here in the Philippines. The goal? To reach the next 5 billion. But while the technical side of the second generation of handsets has been quite good, sales have not, thus forcing Google to water down the Android One project by allowing OEMs to have more freedom in choosing components and as news indicated, Google's commitment to software updates for the next generation of Android One handsets would lie on the hands of the OEM. And so, I guess, those who still own a G1, this may be the last of its kind, of truly being and purely an Android One project. Belated Happy New Year, Ugmayong Adlaw mga higala. This is John Ray and welcome to Joe Arc Tech Channel. Hey, I know this review is kind of late already, but I just want to give you my thoughts about the Android One G1 and you know what I like about it. So stay tuned and enjoy. This video review is brought to you by Zana Technologies and RumorTechBlog.com. I don't know how you would put it, or how you would understand me, but in all the G1's quirkiness, it is a phone that holds a special place in my love for smartphones. Of course, this is certainly not the most powerful device out there, especially in its price range, and the design, display, and even reliable internet connectivity take a backseat on this phone. Understandably, it is a cheap phone but it is by no means a simple, cheap handset. I wish I could talk in depth about the G1's design, but there isn't much to talk about. Its prominent design is the silver lines running on its side and the speaker and mic grills. Despite being made of plastic, the phone feels sturdy and the back cover's rubbery texture make the G1 grippy. Opening the back cover reveals the 2500mAh battery, the two SIM slots, and the microSD slot. The 5-inch IPS HD display of the G1 is at 293.72 pixels per inch, and texts look decently sharp, which is already a far cry from the first generation of Android One handsets. Screen brightness does quite well in direct sunlight. The display is covered with a Dragon Trail glass, which, aside from having a big scratch when I dropped the G1, has done a pretty good job of protecting the glass panel. Driving under the hood of the G1 is a 1.2GHz quad-core Snapdragon 410 paired with a 2GB of RAM and a 16GB of storage. With the upgrade to Marshmallow, the G1 can now use the microSD as the primary storage for the phone. This means apps and games can now be installed on the SD card. Nowadays, the most asked feature of smartphones is the camera capability. With a 13 megapixel BSI rear camera with dual LED flash and a 5 megapixel BSI front, the question now, does it deliver? Well, that would actually depend on what your expectations are. Here are some random shots I took while I was in Da Nang City, Vietnam. These shots are straight out of the camera. Colors are well saturated, and there is no evidence of over sharpening. The camera holds up pretty well in strong contrast lighting conditions. Even dynamic range is quite sufficient for a camera at this price range. But does it rival expensive smartphones? No, it does not. But for social media consumption and light artistic photo editing, it does the job. The selfie camera also does well in good lighting conditions, but then struggles with strong backlit scenes. While the photos are good, taking photos on the G1 is annoying, especially when opening the camera app, and snapping pictures takes a second or two. This behavior even worsens in low light conditions, with the rear camera being the worst at its struggles to focus and shoot. I have to warn you though, the glass on the rear camera scratches easily, which may lead to poor image contrast. The G1 also shoots video at 1080p on the rear camera and 720p on the front, 
while the video quality of the rear camera rivals that of the Flare X, the lags and jitters I encountered while recording video dampens the whole experience. Either the micro SD card was not fast enough or the processor was not up to the challenge. Connectivity on the G1 is well covered from Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, and LTE on both SIMs. Only NFC is missing. There was a significant improvement in network connectivity once the G1 was updated to Marshmallow as automatic switching to LTE or 3G was a bit faster and more reliable. There are rare internet timeouts and disconnections. Network and Wi-Fi speeds are now stable on the G1 even though it is not as fast as mid-range devices. What I still don't like is how Google never considered putting a 3G only option in the preferred network type. But thankfully, the G1 holds on quite well even in very weak LTE or 3G signals. Basic telephony functions such as calls and texts have no issues. Calls are sufficiently loud and clear and texts arrive on time. So what exactly do I like about the Cherry Mobile Android One G1? Well first, reliability. Before getting a more powerful smartphone in the Samsung Galaxy Note 5, the G1 was my go-to everyday phone. It was more reliable than the Flare X at just about anything aside from camera quality and heavy gaming. While GPS doesn't lock as fast as other expensive smartphones, it does perform really well once it has locked in. Navigation has proven to be very useful when I was in Vietnam and visiting Manila. Even if performance is not blazingly fast, the G1 was stable and consistent. And because it runs only at 1.2 GHz, it doesn't get quite as hot as flagship devices. This is a testament to how good Android has become with the Marshmallow update. The second thing I like about the G1 is its simplicity. There is nothing fancy or appealing about the G1's design. Yes, it looks better than the previous generation. But comparing this with the Flare 4, 4S, or even my phone's offerings, it really pales in comparison. But its simplistic design seems right at home to Android Marshmallow. Lastly, full Android experience. As I have mentioned, and as you may have already noticed, there is nothing special about the Android One G1's hardware. But what separates it from the rest of the pack is its pure, unadulterated Android experience. To the vast majority of consumers, it may not mean anything, but to the geeks, to the wannabe geeks, hobbyists, or whatever you call yourselves, a pure Android experience and getting the greatest and latest Android version is what really matters. Now, I certainly do not want to talk about performance without connecting it with the software running on the G1, which is Android Marshmallow. What the G1 lacks in actual hardware performance is compensated by an optimized OS running smoothly on a low-end device and that to me is what performance is. Yes, the Android Marshmallow update lowered its Antutu score a bit but my actual user experience with the phone was smooth and with the additional feature, Doze has significantly improved battery life when my phone is idle and on its back. Aside from the better user experience, the G1 is among the few handsets that get regular updates from Google, a luxury even owners of expensive smartphones do not have. So while hardware is not the G1's strength, Android Marshmallow makes up for that shortcoming. My love for this smartphone is simply based on that very single premise. And this is what makes the Cherry Mobile G1 special. Not everyone will get it. And certainly, there are more better looking offerings at the 6,000 pesos or $125 price range. But all those offerings do not stack up against the value of having a full Android experience. Sadly, the next generation of Android One handsets will lie in the hands of the OEMs. We may or may not see another budget level full Android experience in the future, but I really hope this project does go on, giving us and others the experience of what truly makes an Android experience. Hey guys, thanks for watching uh, my very late review of the Cherry Mobile Android One G1. I hope that you enjoyed it. Some of the video clips were taken in Bien Bao Cafe in Da Nang, Vietnam, and I would like to give a shout out to Nu and Nam for giving or finding me that wonderful place to have those shots. As always, if you like the video, don't forget to give me that thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and get future updates from me. Until then, see you again next time. Bye!